Okay. Um, so how does the Viterbi algorithm work? Well, all you have to do, the fundamental principle is this. So let's say um, we're driving from Vancouver to Toronto. And every uh, road that goes from Vancouver to Toronto passes through, let's say, either Edmonton or Calgary. Lots of possible roads. You can take back roads, you can take major highways, you can take all kinds of possible paths from Vancouver to Edmonton, Vancouver to Calgary, and again from Edmonton to Calgary to Toronto. So lots of possible paths you can take, but every every such path goes through either Edmonton or Calgary. And I want to say, I want to know um, what's the minimum? What's the path? Vancouver to Calgary, to Vancouver to Toronto, with minimum gas cost. So cost in terms of gas, let's say cost in terms of gas is proportional to distance. So basically I'm asking what's the shortest path from Vancouver to Toronto. So since every path goes through either Edmonton or Calgary. And think of it this way. Let's say there are a bunch of paths into Edmonton. Um, one of them, uh, so it's uh, with minimum cost, so uh, let's just substitute distance for cost. So let's say this path in total, it, it goes through a bunch of windy back roads, and the total distance here is, let's say, uh, 2,000 kilometers. Distance for this path is this is a path along major highways. It says 1,500 kilometers. Total distance for this path, let's say, is 1,800 kilometers. Total distance for this path is uh, I don't know 2,100 kilometers, and so on. And similarly to Calgary, uh, we can take a, a road along major highways, 1,000 kilometers or 1,500 kilometers on back roads or something. But the point is, every path goes through either end of the calculator. So, uh, what I can do, the overall minimum path from Vancouver to Cal from Vancouver to Toronto, must be the minimum path to either Edmonton or Calgary, plus the minimum path, uh, the, plus the minimum path from Edmonton to Toronto and Calgary to Toronto. So it's the minimum between those two. So basically. All I, need to, all I need to keep over here is the shortest path from Vancouver to Edmonton and the bank, shortest path from Vancouver to Calgary and those are these two. So because there's a natural breakpoint here, I only need to keep the shortest path from Vancouver to Edmonton and the shortest path from Vancouver to Calgary. Because if the minimum path goes through Edmonton, let's say, so let's say there's another path over here with like 1,000 kilometers, and another path over here with like, uh, excuse me, that'd be more like 3,000 kilometers, and another path over here with like 3,700 kilometers. So now the minimum goes through Edmonton. This is the total minimum path. So it's impossible that a longer path from Vancouver to Edmonton Part of the could be part of the optimal solution because I could always switch this with a shorter path that goes through Edmonton, and that takes that same uh, that same minimum path to Toronto. So this must be the minimum path from Vancouver to Toronto must include the minimum path from Vancouver to each of the possible intermediate points. So the same principle will apply over here. Yes. Provided there's zero percent error in your convolutional code there would be always be a path of weight zero. Correct. And given it's really, really small, there's obviously it's going to be the same number of like, let's say one weight one times, right? That's also possible. That's also How possible. How do you distinguish between which one is? So if there's a tie, um, there's a number of things you can do. There's no best way. Um, if there's a tie, you're allowed to flip a coin. Um, if that's not convenient, you can declare a decoding failure. Um, in practice,
this. We don't do counting errors like this. What we do is we, uh, this is beyond this course, but uh, counting errors assumes that every error has the same probability, and then assume that, uh, that each bit, once it's demodulated, uh, after demodulation, you have all of the possible information. But there, there's some extra information you can glean here that, 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 that makes these path metrics real numbers. The same principles apply, but you don't, you don't count the integers anymore, so ties are less likely. So don't worry about that too much. Um, if, there's, if there's a tie going into any node, in other words, if there's any pair of paths that have the same distance, then you're, then you're free to flip a coin. So the idea is, all you have to do is keep, because these are the minimum points, so in other words, I have, I originate at the zero state, and I end at the zero state, and for each trellis section, there are many possible paths, going into all of these intermediate nodes. And I know that the true code word must pass through one of these points. The true code word must pass through one of these four points. Then I'm free to keep only the minimum cost path into possible paths into each state into just the one that has the lowest cost. So on the left, at each state, I only have one what's called survivor path. Because the minimum cost from the start to this intermediate point is guaranteed. If, if this state is on, is on the path, origin to destination, then the minimum cost from the start to this state is guaranteed to be part of that path. You can't have an alternative longer path because then you can just switch to this one with a lower cost. So uh, the number of paths you keep is equal Now, the complexity scales linearly in the length of the code and exponentially in the number of flip-flops because the number of states increases exponentially as you increase the number of flip-flops. And uh, the paths you keep are called survivors. So that's great. So we. Uh, if you think about all of the possible paths through this graph, well, each, with each state, you pick up two additional outgoing edges. So um, then if you start in the all-zero state, then there's two possible paths. And from here, there's an additional two from each state. So that's 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. It grows exponentially the number of possible paths. But now I'm telling you, you don't need to keep all of them. You only need to keep the minimum into each state. So the, the complexity grows to 4 stays there. So, basically the Viterbi algorithm works like this. The initialization, the all zero path, all zero state has zero cost. All other states have infinite cost. Then calculate 